and he's back. All right, so let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Father God, thank you for just giving me this opportunity to share this message right now as it has been prepared. This is not the first time it has been shared. But Father God, we just pray that this um, time, just what we're about to do, preaching on it takes faith and about Peter walking on water, Lord God, we just pray that you guide the hearts, minds, and souls to just hear more about you. To live a life worth multiplying. How we can apply this message to our lives. So the faith that we have. We can walk on the water like Peter did. That we stay focused on you, Father God. And if anything I say today does not bring honor and glory to you. Lord, do not let others hear it, Lord God, because it is all you and it is all because of you why this message is what it is today. Father, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Wait, what? He's back? Yes, I am. So, um, some of you may not know that recently I have been to uh, Tanzania, Africa on a church mission. During that time of being in Africa, I chose not to do any videos because A, the internet is not super good, but also I wanted my focus to be on the Lord. I also uh, spent three months in Florida, Orlando, Florida. Uh, in a school uh, called Discipleship Training School at YWAM Orlando. Um, and yeah, it was a great school. Um, and that's what's really led into this part of the series. Today I'm going to talk about It Takes Faith. Um, I shared this sermon in Tanzania, a part of the school that you do you have to go share a sermon in a cross-cultural location or in, in um, during your outreach. So, since I was in Tanzania, I shared this sermon. So, um, it's about Peter and walking on water. So, I'm going to go ahead and start and uh, just go from there. So, Matthew 14, verses 22 through 36. This can also be found in Mark. Um which I'll have that scripture reference here in a little bit here. Okay. I'm going to be reading from the NLT version. NLT. So, um, starting at Matthew 14, verses 22 through 36. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sat no while he sent the people home after sending them home he went up into the hills to pray by himself night fell while he was alone there meanwhile the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind has had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Yes, come. Oh, wait, I skipped a little verse there. So then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you 
walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw this strong wind come toward the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Guinness, Guinness which I'll have that actually along the bottom of the screen, because um, I know I'm saying it wrong. But when the people recognized Jesus, the news of the arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area. And soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to look, well, to let the sick touch at least the fringe of the robe. And all who touched it, all who touched him, were healed. Okay, so I just want to uh, just kind of expand on this just a little bit. I have some notes here. All right. So Jesus had the disciples get back into the boat and cross this big lake knowing what was to come. Jesus had this crowd where the disciples and him were gathered originally, but he sent them home. So after sending the people home, Jesus went up to the hills to pray by himself. According to the Bible, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. By the time he got up from prayer, and he started going toward the to his disciples. By this point, they were far ways out into the into this lake. The storm was brewing. The heavy, heavy waves and the high winds just coming and just crashing down. Jesus started to walk on the water out to them, and the disciples saw him walking on the water, and they were terrified. They were scared, and in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost. Peter was even scared. He called out to Jesus asking, if it is really you. Then have me walk out to you on the water. So Jesus told Peter, come walk on the water. And you see, Peter went over the edge of that boat. Began to walk on the water. He walked toward Jesus. His focus was on Jesus. But when Peter saw the waves and dealt with the wind that was going that was around him and his surroundings, he began to sink. Because what was his focus? He shouted out, Save me, Lord! You see, at the point where, where Peter lost focus, things quickly changed. Yes, it took courage to step out of that boat and onto that water. But it takes faith to walk on that water. Again, I'll repeat that. It takes courage to step out 
of the boat onto the water. But it takes faith to walk on the water. You see, how often do we lack trust? How often do we call out to the Lord for help? Jesus did reach out of that. Um, when he's standing in the water, he reached out to Peter. And he caught him. And he says, You have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? In our times of struggle, do we doubt? On the most recent uh, mission trip, while in Tanzania, Africa, I get the news from a text message that read, I just got the news that your uncle passed away. It crushed me. Because here I am in Tanzania, literally across the world. The thought went through my mind of just running from the Lord. Why would a good God do this to me? Why would God allow this to happen in my own life? I don't get it. So I could have ran from my faith. But something Matthew... Uh, 14 and Mark 6 teaches it teaches a good point here when I was lacking faith Jesus did not give up on me when Jesus and Peter got back into that boat the wind and the waves stopped it was a test. It was a test. And you see, Peter lost focus on Jesus, and that's when he began to fail. He began to sink. See, how often do we lose focus? When they got up into that boat, the disciples just began to celebrate and worship Jesus, the Son of God. They said, you really are the Son of God. This was even a test to them. They lacked faith. They had to see it to trust it was Him. Like I said earlier, it takes faith to walk on the water. So what's your water? When the disciples and Jesus got to the land, others recognized Jesus. The news came over the land very, very quickly, and sick were being brought. Many even began uh, wanting to just touch the fringe of the robe. That's the bottom of the robe. Every single person who touched him was healed. That is faith. So where in your lack, where in your life are you lacking faith? Do you trust the father of all fathers? Or are you living more like Peter? Where's your focus? So I want to begin to wrap all this up and I want to share that we have all been in times of struggle. But it's what we do about it that matters. Are you going to be like Peter? Are you going to lack faith? How's your relationship with the Father? 
Let me go ahead and close out in prayer. Father God, I just come to you right now and I just thank you for just giving me this opportunity to get back on this platform and to share your message with others, Lord God. Lord God, I know that so many times right now we have been um, just battling this, this battle of COVID and just, um, just so much stuff going on in, the, in our world. And sometimes we just feel like the walls are coming in and we're getting just, we're beginning to sink like Peter. But Father, we know it takes faith. Father, it takes faith to walk on the water. So God, just please teach us how to move from taking the courage to step out of that boat to actually taking the faith to walk on the water and be with you and to be focused on you and to be guided in life because of you, Father. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.